Oh, thanks, Rob, for commenting. Let me know if the sound is working now. Uh, I think potentially I have fixed that. And if so, if you want to put a comment in that says, hey, the sound starts working at whatever it is, two minutes in, that would be helpful as well. Um, and so uh, what I was saying, uh, often in my life when I am trying to figure out what's going on, if I get consumed or if I begin to get worried about something, my hope is always for scripture to begin navigating for me uh, a place for me to root myself again in what's best and in what's healthy so that I can be uh, focused on what God would have for me. And if I'm honest, I'll admit that the last couple of days I have begun uh, a sense and pattern of there being worrying about the future. I have been worried because um, it is likely that about 10 minutes from now our governor will announce a state mask mandate. I'm not worried about there being a mask mandate. I might not have chosen it personally, but I can uh, follow that fine and submit to that fine. I'm worried because it means uh, we'll have to think through what that means about how we've gotten used to doing church again. And as a leader, uh, that likely means that I need to be having conversations and making decisions and communicating those things as clearly as I can. That's work that I'll do, but there's another added layer this week that has made that more worrisome. If you're a part of our database, you may have gotten an email. If not, I'll just let you know. Currently, as I'm speaking, our website is down. There's a tech issue behind the scenes causing that, and we're working to get that fixed. But that same tech issue also means our staff hasn't had access to our work emails for two days. And so we don't know what emails we've missed, and uh, that's disheartening at times, but we're thankful for your grace as we navigate through figuring those things out. But when you combine those kinds of two things, the likelihood that I have to make clear decisions with the team of leaders here, and then communicate those things as well as I can, without the ability for my church email to communicate those things well the way we usually do and post them on websites the way that we usually do just leaves me in this sense of how are things going to go is everything going to be okay and as i just personally start to recognize in my life worry i always want to resort myself to well what does scripture say is appropriate right now what does scripture say is a better focus than just constantly being consumed and frustrated and worn down and beaten up by those things? And so um, Matthew 6, a uh, familiar passage uh, for those of us who deal with worry may be a challenging passage for those of us who deal with worry at times maybe, says this, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life about what you will eat or drink, about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly Father feeds you. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Yesterday, that was my thought. It was, hey, there may be a mask mandate announcement coming in the next couple of days. And I kept sitting at home and thinking, it's not worth just continuing to think about that now until it's reality. Worrying about it isn't changing anything. And so I was calmed by the fact that my worrying wouldn't help. As it became clear today that that's the likely expectation, as it became clear today that it's likely that that will be effective by this weekend, uh, it made me start to think, oh, now I will actually have to practically make decisions what does that look like? I want to be reminded then that worrying about those things and how people will respond both personally and collectively doesn't add things. Instead, Scripture organizes us differently. It says, why worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They don't labor or spin. I tell you, even Solomon in all his splendor wasn't dressed like one of these. If God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, so I won't he clothe you more, you of little faith? So don't worry saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear, or what do we have to do, or how long do we have to do it, or what will we respond, or why was that decision made? Don't worry about these things. For the pagans run after all of those things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them. But, and here's the important part that's rooting for me again today, but seek first his kingdom and righteousness. All these things will be given to you as well.
Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Instead, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. We'll no doubt continue doing that as a church. Whether we're wearing masks or not, we will be seeking the kingdom and the righteousness. Often we end reading there because it's the clear section divide maybe of what Jesus is saying. But I want to go just into Matthew chapter 7 and what he goes on to. As he's done with talking about how we don't need to worry, each day has enough trouble of its own, he continues, Don't judge or you too will be judged. From the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be used against you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? And Jesus, as he's giving this message, says essentially, you need to stop worrying about yourself, about everything, about how it impacts you. Seek God, seek his righteousness. Everything works out best as we focus on seeking God and seeking his righteousness. There's too much to worry about, so just don't even bother. Each day is enough. Stop worrying about those other things. And yet then continues. And in response to that, make sure you're not just judgmental of everybody else. Make sure you're viewing your own self and what's wrong with you and not just starting to label everybody else as the ones who did something wrong. And so that's my heart and my hope. In the midst of this, while I may be, would have made different decisions, I'm, I understand why someone might put a mask mandate in place. I may not have made the decision, but there's no part of me that doesn't understand that. And I'm not going to just sit and hope that the rallying cry would be that of judgment. It's not personally what's valuable for my Christian walk to say, you know what my role is now is to begin judging. It's no, I'm going to look at what I can do, how I can do it well, how I can seek God in his righteousness, how I can lead our community in doing the same. What that will look like and mean is something that hopefully we'll be able to communicate clearly, even in a time where we don't have websites or access to the same level of email that we always do. And I'm, I'm, it's not that I won't be intentional and I won't be diligent in making those decisions and prayerful and hopefully God honoring and responsive in that. But I also hope then that alongside doing all that, I can do so without worry. I can do so without fear. I can do that so without being consumed and anxious. And so if you're consumed or anxious by anything, whether it's emails not working or impending health decisions made by our local communities, I'd encourage you, make sure what's most important to you is seeking God and his righteousness. Matthew, in Jesus' sermon on Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew's 5 through 7, a great rooting text for some of that. And so if you're finding yourself consumed, I'd encourage you to read the end of Matthew chapter 6, the beginning of Matthew chapter 7, and root yourself in seeking God and his righteousness. I hope you do that. I hope it's valuable to root yourself in that way and that it eases worry the same way it often does for me, being focused on God instead of simply on the circumstances around us. Hope that helps. Grace and peace to you. Thanks for watching.